I think Ruby is a tool that we use, but uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're building dreams or I don't know, whatever, but like we're, we're creating products for users, like dream creator. I think, you know, like Ruby could go out of Vogue next year, or, you know, you could want to work for somewhere that does JavaScript or God forbid Java, I don't know, something. Um, Do you hate yourself? I just, I don't <laughs> think that uh, having a strong identification with your career and a certain language is a good idea. Wow. Coming out, coming out of the gate strong, VC. This could be a uh, blasphemy at a, a Ruby meetup. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. I'll kick you out of the Zoom call. But I think, You're destroying I mean, my whole identity. Yeah, for me, you like, vanished. The two great things about Ruby is that it allows you to get things going fast. Mm. And the kind of companies that I want to work for have been using Ruby. Mm. So that's a bonus, right? Yeah. But I, no, I mean, you, you, I mean, I choose the language I learn based on the places that I want to work. Ah, so here's another tip. Look at the places you want to work at and choose the uh, language accordingly. <laughs> it, it, well, I, I think, I think David, you're, you're like, uh, um, talking about uh like the opposite of the question here add a note to your career as a ruby developer <laughs> you're just like don't be one <laughs> that's, a, that's how we open he's, he's trying to say is don't call don't make that your central identity as what makes you strong yeah i i feel like is is a hard yes yeah i mean people people in that yeah if we think about more concrete examples people say in the construction industry don't call themselves hammers or screwdrivers they call themselves builders or architects they don't call themselves pencilers <laughs> sorry but, but I, th I think the opposite of that is also true and, and even with your architecture thing right if you if your architecture is around building things for for, for people then you're going right i'm an architect of of housing but if you are doing um, you know, sheds for, for pig farming or something like that, that's a specialist thing that you're just saying, right, I, I know there is a, there's a market and people need pig, pig farms built and I'm an architect that designs the kind of sheds and the kind of stalls that are required. And, and I mean, I'm using that as a real example. I had a friend of mine, family friend who was an, who was an architect and he was asked to architect a, a, a large uh, pig stall system and he said I don't know the first thing about what would need to be required in terms of room and spacing etc uh, and I think the same goes for us like sure there are a lot of companies you know I don't know D David and I worked at Redbubble and Redbubble was like oh it's all about the product and it's all about it's all about the user experience and and and, and you know the quality of of what we deliver is number one but there, for a lot of us, there's still a lot of jobs where if I choose Ruby, uh, I can go into these companies that are reasonably nice to work in um, that, that have similar uh, kind of problems uh, that I can transport my skills mm -hmm. and, and maybe that I just, that, that I can then climb that ladder of being a Ruby developer. And it won't be as easy for me to switch to say, well, I want to work at Google. And they say, well, at Google, we don't use Ruby. We use Python and Go and whatever. Uh, and it may actually be quite a hit for my career to say, okay, well, I really, really want to work at Google, but I have to start again with, with my skills in Go. And, and you know, certain skills are transferable, but, but certain skills take a lot of time to be proficient at the libraries, the ecosystem, know how to solve problems. Uh, in in that space that's a very good point too does does the title of ruby developer sort of um uh portray a, a bit more um experience or, or quality than just like software developer where you're lumped in with java and everything else And what about web developer, which is a bit more specialized and more like I build these sorts of sorts of things, web applications. Um, it may 
maybe Ruby, maybe I used to do that in Pearl a long time ago. Mm. Whatever. I suppose it depends on the context that you are using these words and names and places in. That'll be a big one. I don't discriminate very hard when I look at these titles, but maybe because I, I say that because I have contextual understanding, but maybe a recruiter might feel differently. Mm. Yeah, it's totally context. Like if, if I'm introducing myself to some random person and they ask me what I do, I'm like, I'm a software developer, I work in green energy. Um, but yeah, if I'm talking to a, um, if I'm at a tech meetup, so mm -hmm. like I'm at a Ruby developer. I think though, like, you know, we're talking about like nurturing your career, right? Like maybe your career in tech is 30 years long, 40 years long. Like the language that you're coding in today, maybe you'll keep coding in it for five years. Maybe you'll keep coding in it for 10 years, but I think it's unrealistic to assume that you'll still be coding in Ruby. I mean, that everyone here will still be coding in Ruby in 10 years time. Like mm. things change, things develop. And so when we're talking about your career, like Ruby is a tool that we're using currently because it serves our purpose very well, but I don't think we should just box ourselves into that for the rest of our career. Mm. Should we perhaps talk about what I think was the spirit of the question of like how to actually uh, develop yourself as a developer? I think yeah. that's fair. I, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be way off the mark here. Um, I often am. But uh, I, I would say that the best things that you can do for your career is not getting better at Ruby. It's getting better at those skills that will be transferable across any language. Can you pinpoint some of them? Oh, you go, DC. No, you go, now. I could talk about this all day. We'd be here for hours. Do it. I mean, we know about the soft skills, right? But I guess like more so any but technical. Do we skills. know about the soft skills? Do you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? But do you? Do you really? <laughs> even even apart from the soft skills, though, like there's there's technical skills that aren't language specific, like yeah, you know, turning requirements into algorithms, like thinking of edge cases, debugging code. Mm. Thinking of uh, like modularizing things so code bases stay, you know, usable for years to come. Mm. So, or, like, or harder things like not not harder things, but more, more technical rather than soft. So hard um, things like algorithms, data structures. Um, mm. time, time complexity for both memory and uh, time, time and space complexity of your algorithms that you're using. Things like um, abstractions and concrete implementations of ideas, mm. um, different paradigms, whether you're using object oriented stuff, whether you're using functional programming, um, some combination thereof. Um, and where those things have advantages and disadvantages. Um, refactoring, testing, different types of testing and where they're appropriate, not appropriate. Um, these are all not soft skills, but you can get better at them regardless of what language you're using. And some of them go across all languages. Some of them depend on the, the ecosystem that you're in. So. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, in Ruby, we find that testing is very much de rigueur for doing any development in most Ruby mm. stacks. But you jump over to iOS and it's, it's a bit different. <laughs> it's still encouraged in many senses, but it's, for, for many years, there wasn't a um, a strong sense of this is what, what we do tests and this is why and what, anyway I'm not going to get into that here but um, it, it does depend on the ecosystem and the languages that you're using mm. um, and so I, I, I do take David Deuce's point about 
um, you know, tying yourself to a particular language and ecosystem can limit your options moving forward. I mean, mm -hmm. if you were a C++ developer 10 years ago um, and you tied your identity to C++ and then you encountered Rust and said, oh, well, that's interesting, but um, I'm not going to explore that because I'm a C++ developer. Would that be the wisest choice? I don't know. Um, you know, what are the options that are going to be presented to us in the next 10, even 20 years mm. as Ruby developers? You know, I, no, I can't say nobody here either, but being open to those options seems like a wise choice. So nurturing uh, concepts, transferable concepts, higher level concepts. I guess it's in a way, no, I'm just going to stop you. <laughs> I, I suppose, I mean, it's interesting, um, everyone's points. And, and I think it depends where people are on their developer journeys, right? Mm. Um, if you're right at the beginning and, and I'm watching my wife, who's just done a boot camp, she, she is looking to get hired. She's just... Uh, uh, I don't know why I'm at the computer and she's dropping a kid off to basketball. Um, but uh, she's going to be at Rails Camp, so if you want to hire her, she'll be there. Um, but for her, getting Ruby skills is critical because she's got to get up to speed on learning how Ruby works or how any language works and how, um, how, how she can kind of solve problems that way. And at some mm. point... She able to switch and go right actually um, where she's just not going to all of the things we've said right mm -hmm. I, I, you know i look at back i've got 30 years of experience in in everything from hardware to operating systems to software to computer science degrees to working in numerous companies that's going to be hard for her to breach as a pure ruby developer uh, but certainly as somebody working in the technology space um, and working for companies that maybe used Ruby development and understanding what Ruby development involves, she could still contribute. Um, so for her, and, and maybe her soft skills and her management skills are already better than mine or somebody else's, so she may not have to work as much on that. So I think, I think a lot of it depends on where we're at. Um, and I, I mean, I suppose the question is open to everyone then, like, well, what have you done last year that's nurtured your career uh, and, and how, you know, like, how can you give that as, as an example to the rest of us so we can go, oh, maybe I should particularly focus on this or somebody said they did this course or they did this, I don't know, read this book, whatever it was. And I suppose the reverse is like, like what can you do this year to nurture your career and, and to be a better developer or let's say redeveloper? These are two great questions. Round table. Brandon had a career milestone yesterday. He found a bug in pseudo. That's how, what he did to nurture his career. Do you, um, how can I want to phrase this? Do you find like, so, you know, the, the world wide web is a extensive place, right? And you're always looking to pick up some skills, right? I find it hard to know when, like, I guess when enough is enough, you know? Like, there's all these topics, right? And you're like, oh, like, you want to dabble in all these topics. And, like, where, like, should you go, like, real deep on each one? Or is it, like, a waste of time? Like, should you go, you know, to a certain lens and then learn, learn, yeah, I guess that I'm not providing an answer, but I, I find depth versus breadth is always a conundrum. Um, mm. And I think you can really uh, choose whichever whichever path you want. Like having mm. having people in a in a team with with varied experience uh, can can really help. Like knowing about some some technology not not necessarily how to how to use it or anything but just knowing it's there like the, the breadth thing um 
might might mean that you know that that might be applicable to a particular problem you're facing um mm. and you can then uh like talk to a team member who who has experience in that thing to um to get it happening um but on the other hand like you know knowing the ins and outs of bash syntax and everything uh could be really handy for other situations and so yeah i think um i think I don't the, find out the mix of what what works best but yeah i think the depth versus breadth thing um it can have an influence over what companies you will be able to get jobs at in the future okay um a lot of smaller companies and startups especially will not have the luxury of being able to hire someone who's just a depth mm. like really specific and knowledgeable about one small thing um you know the smaller company the more you need to be a breadth sort of person and you know it's it's totally fine to go either way but uh if you long to work in startups and you just become really good at optimizing postgres indexes and nothing else you might have trouble finding that perfect gig whereas you could work for a very large corporation and spend 10 years optimizing postgres indexes makes indices makes sense so I mean, maybe pick pick your path depending on where where you think you might want to what size company you might want to work in uh, coming back to Michael's question about what you have done mm. last year to change your career and what you'll do this year, mm. I'm curious as to I'm curious for everyone's responses. But maybe do you want to kick us off, Michael? Oh, I was I was curious for everyone's as well. Um, and, uh, well someone's going <coughs> to surprise. That's the problem. Yeah. No, it's interesting that you say that, right? So I think notoriously I waste um, my nurturing time on building apps from scratch uh, and things like that or playing with new technologies so you know whether it's Next.js or SvelteKit or Svelte or whatever new thing that I hear about um, so, and I don't think that necessarily nurtures my career um, I think I think probably the best thing for me last year was <laughs> swap, swapping jobs twice um, and just get kind of getting that you know I'd been at Fresho for almost four years and I jumped to a really early startup and then I jumped to a, a, a really skyrocketing startup at Zepto, um, which was kind of kind of interesting in different development strategies, different um, coding strategies, different um, setups of, of things. Um, there were certain things that I thought were really, really clever of what we did at Fresho that we had missed the train on gems that have Kind of shown up since we had started the code base and and those gems were in place at zepto and i was like oh here's three gems that solve all of our problems that we kind of were dealing with in one particular part of the code base there so for me certainly um it it was the right time to to move to try and to to see how other people work and 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 i think i'm I, i'm better now i i value more of what i learned throughout my time I'm fresher and then uh, through the, the time of the other jobs. But I know we've had this discussion here before as to, you know, like, uh, I mean, Nadia said she would love to work two, two weeks in every company. Mm. Um, and we were talking about like, you know, at, at some point in the past, there was kind of this exchange between the conversation and others. Um, but on the reverse, we were saying that the later in your career you get, maybe the better it is to stay there for a longer time because you get to see kind of, you know, changes, et cetera. Anyway, I'll, so for me, the biggest thing last year was probably switching careers twice because I've been at a place for four years. Um, but it looks like there's a hand up. Hmm. Adam. I just wanted to riff off what you were saying. Um, I actually found early in my career, I really appreciated spending a bit of time in one business, not just because it um, it allowed me to, um, I think earlier on, it's hard if you're jumping between lots of things and it's it's kind of, um, it's helpful to just sort of really master one particular set of areas. But what I found is what was really valuable for me was having the time to see my poor design decisions play out 
And um, I learned a hell of a lot from having to clean up my own messes. Whereas if I'd kind of jumped ship early, I probably would have thought that those were the, the right solution at the right time and would be making the wrong choices now. I totally agree with that. Um, like when, when I started a green sink, uh, what, four and a half years ago, um, yeah, we, we were like building up uh, an application from, from scratch, uh, rewriting a thing that was in Go. Um, but um, now we're like, we're having to scale it out and we are having to like backtrack on a lot of the, the decisions we made early on um, about how fun, fundamental stuff about how the, how the system works in order to reach, reach that level of performance that we need like now, let alone uh, <laughs> you know the track. Do so, you, it's amazing. Do you think, it's a tiny segue, but do you think, um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, do you think back then you needed to be there to be where you are now? I guess what I'm, the question I'm ask, uh, asking is um, the problem of maybe optimizing early. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe uh, you just start and you're not, you're like, I know like I've worked at like a really big company and I like know what, that we need these things to scale, but really you need those things when you're there and not at the beginning. Like, like I don't know, is that, do you, do you find, yeah. Does, does that make sense? It's the Twitter discussion, basically. Like, um, you know, they, they got where they were by starting on Ruby. And then mm. eventually it got, to, um, they got overloaded and have to pivot. But probably if they built it the way it was built today, when they started, it would have taken so long, they wouldn't have been able to get to market. Probably never would have been Twitter. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Like if okay. you had, if Brendan had have built it highly optimized for a load that it wasn't going to have for four years, then that would have just been a waste of effort. Okay. Yeah. In, in order to do, in order to do the scaling, we've had to add complexity. And if we had, had to have yeah. that complexity the whole time and um, spend the extra time working that out from the start. Uh, yeah. Would have just taken ages. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was sort of thinking at a, at a even at a simpler level, like um, I can remember a time when I first learned about um, um, ternary, um, mm -hmm. ternaries and I thought, oh, this is so exciting. And I thought oh, you could nest them and it's going to be so cool. And then <laughs> like three and six months later, when I have to go back and remember what that stuff does and like, this is really hard to read now. Yeah. You're like, actually, I wasn't cool at all. <laughs> yeah nice one i think so i don't know if i'm answering this question i'm not but um i'd like to to discuss like what does that mean to nurture your career like does that mean to get promoted or to get a better job or to just feel energized for a longer time through your career like what is mm. what does career success mean in this context yeah, because not burn out i think like if we wanted a job for the next 30 years in tech, we'd all probably be able to keep the job in tech for 30 years. But like, how do we know that we've nurtured it? I think that having that verb of nurturing definitely maybe brings a bit of more of like a fulfilling aspects of it, right? It definitely doesn't sound like the question is like, the question is not like, how do I, get like the highest paying job in Ruby. Like, you know, it's, it's, to me, it sounds like, yeah. How do a, you have like a fulfilling career in a way for whatever, I guess. Philosophical path are. of like, what does success mean to you? Yeah. Well, yeah, it does come down to that a little bit. No. Maybe this is a three part question. Part number one is what does that mean? What have you done historically and what will be you be doing ahead? Take it away, Michael. <laughs> he's done. He's already done. Wait, so what he hasn't done is what he's going to do this coming year. Okay. Okay. No one else has answered so far. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were going to go around the room. Yeah, I know. It's me. hard. I thought we were going to do segments and then go around Cause, the room. Cause, because at this point, I'm I'm on hrzone.com and <laughs> seeing, in a nutshell, five ways to nurture your own career. Oh. <laughs> and they've got a big a big plant growing as the first thing and demonstrate <laughs> business acumen. So this is Nadia, this is what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to demonstrate business acumen, <laughs> enhance my technical expertise. I'm going to vary wow. my expertise and I'm going to stay focused. I cannot wait to hear this Ruby talk next month. <laughs> so, so 
would you say that you say by the end you say by staying focused but would trying to tackle full thing be unfocused yeah variety Wouldn't plus focus want... good paradox <laughs> like focused variety to really think about it you know Sorry. okay someone else who what have you done last year to nurture your career and what will you do this year wait did you say someone's name no i said someone else i'm, oh. I'm throwing the ball around you know i'll go just because i'll make it quick uh i just said yes to everything mm. no matter how big no matter how bold i was like you know what fuck it yeah i'll do it Let's see what happens and uh now i'm here and now i'm happy because i said yes to so many things leave your comfort zone right. yeah would you like to um, create Afterpay and move to Zepto? <laughs> Just say yes. I'll think about it. It's not oh. enough. <laughs> so, uh, today, uh, in my, well, yesterday, to be more specific, I got a LinkedIn message, which I know people complain about, but I also like to think that it's such a point of privilege that, you know, you get thrown, you get jobs thrown at you. Anyway, <laughs> my favorite part is playing like the guess who of who they're hiring for. And this was my favorite by far. It is Ruby Digital Bank. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that could be. That's funny. That's so funny. Funny. Who is it? I don't know. I, I give up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful. Well, your dad jokes are on point. <laughs> and what are you going to do this year to nurture your career, Nadia? Uh, I'm going to do what DC has uh, recommended that I do this year to nurture my career. Uh, Not a language. No, no. I mean, I mean, I am doing that. I'm learning Swift UI because uh, I, we have a, a full stack product team now. So I, I like to kind of understand. I'm going to say yes to more things, yeah. but more importantly, I'm going off DC's advice, which is, do my job, but do my job more sustainably. And I feel like part of the nurturing is able to do is being able to do your job sustainably with less effort. And I feel like that's a big one. Okay. Nice. I listen to what DC says. He puts things in my calendar and I do them. And sometimes he tells me to do things and I do them. I thought it was the other way around. No? Oh, Nadia's, my, Nadia's my boss, but sometimes I boss her around. I thought too. so. Okay, okay. I think what what I would plan to do is um, actually get back into personal programming projects. Mm. I haven't done that in a while. Um, I kind of miss it. Nice. Adam just did. <laughs> Not interested in infantry management, are you? Yeah, I was going to say. <gasps> Depends what the infantry is. <laughs> no fun. What about you, DC? What do you think was, uh, was something that you did in the last year that you felt like nurtured your career? And what would you like to do going forward? This feels like oddly a one on one, but uh, <laughs> 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 So. I know. When I was at uh, Culture Amp, I was doing quite a bit of like management stuff. Mm -hmm. And I found that really draining in a remote pandemic y sort of world. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you know, like you're on Zoom all day and you're like trying to manage people, but it's just hard to like really feel connected to them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I was a bit, I don't know, drained, a bit worn out from all that. And so switching to Afterpay, where they were just like, you're just going to be an engineer on the team. Is that OK? And I'm like, that is OK. Uh, yeah, so sort of like just doing the engineering part for a while, uh, I guess, nurtured my, my uh, energy levels mm -hmm. in the last year. DC, are you like, I have people for that now? And that people is Nadia. <laughs> <laughs> I just think um, like managing people can be really fun. Uh, this is my opinion. Uh, but I think it's like 10 times easier if you're actually sitting in the same room as them. 
Yeah, uh, okay. I find it very hard to manage people over Zoom. What okay. what is it that's missing? I don't know if it's just Zoom or if it's if it's like a global pandemic plus Zoom. Uh, because mm. people people were really struggling, like you know, lots of lockdowns and and mental health problems and and like people were really struggling in their personal life and mm. you know you're there as a manager in a work life and you know what can you do like how can you help these people who are just like i'm you know stuck in a share house with people i hate and i can't leave my room and life is awful and you're like oh, i don't know i'm just here to just want to write some ruby for a while You can you can show empathy, say, oh, you know, blah blah blah, show empathy, and then why don't you to get to navigate away from this room, just sink yourself into some Ruby code and get the job done. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, but wouldn't a good manager I find them a new house? What I just felt <laughs> a bit, um, a bit powerless and a bit okay. like taking mm. on the emotional burden of these mm. people's struggles. Was it your first year managing people? It was my third year managing. Third oh. year managing people, yeah. Okay, that was but just our first a challenge. first year managing people during COVID. Yeah, yeah. So that was just that year's challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice one. I'm sure those people liked you as a manager. What are you going to do this year then? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, the the <laughs> the thing we're doing at uh, the money by Afterpay stuff is just like, you know, it's like a rocket ship. Like so much stuff is changing all the time, and I'm just barely holding on half the time. So I feel like I'm I'm learning a lot just just sticking around. Cool, sticking around. That's the thing. That can be the thing. Actual. And then you have someone on the team who always says yes, and then it's just, all right, we'll do that too. Okay, it sounds like I'm overloading. I promise you I'm not. I promise you I'm trying not to. You definitely it's are. But I'm always saying yes to opportunities to, I don't know, allow us to do more and explore more and learn more. And yeah, be aware you're managing people during a pandemic. Maybe their personal life is a bit tougher and you need to show empathy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not laughing, but yeah. Um, uh, one, one more thing that I need to focus on is um, letting go of uh, like knowing the ins and outs of every pull request that, that happens on on our core, core application. That, like, okay. There's, you know, we... We've previously like had less people work on each project at once, and now it's like everybody on the one application, uh, mm. and it's like a lot. I was spending like more than half my time reviewing, um, mm. and yeah, I, I want to do some work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, I, I find it hard to like go like that. That I, I know, I know every piece of the system and um yeah I, I need to need to be able to um i don't know have have faith that that my colleagues are, are going to be able to um know how uh to implement the the changes that that we need to implement without mm. um going over everything with a fine tooth comb. Mm. And do you, do you really appreciate when you're um, acting as an IC and like, is that where you see your career development or? What do you mean? Like uh, as in like actually writing code, like is that is that where you see your progression this year is, is part of writing code, not like, not like moving to management or not some other thing. It's that's, that's what's good for you. Yeah, love writing code. Mm. Cool. I think it sounds perfect for your inventory management thing. Yeah, but he doesn't really like Rails, so. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll happily rewrite it without Rails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pass the ball around. 
anyone else what did they do to nurture their career last year i'm gonna i'm gonna head off oh, um, okay sorry i gotta i gotta pack for rails camp because me too here. i'm gonna head off and go get snacks for rails <laughs> what <laughs> that tomorrow all right sorry guys see ya okay see you, bye see you Nadia. Yeah. <laughs> okay who else I could say what specific things I did last year. Yeah, specific. Um, we want to hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I was um, yeah, been freelancing and doing a lot of other different things and trying to get back into doing Ruby full time. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did the Ruby Book Club, which was a great yeah. thing. It could one day be a great thing again. Um, <laughs> um, but that was that was great. Just to have a weekly like, uh, you know scheduled things so that I actually read the chapter and having chats about it was, was really helpful. Um, I also had a couple other like things set up with people. One was a friend of mine's, like I think I mentioned, uh, open source project in Portland, uh, Calligator, which is their Portland's tech calendar. Um, mm -hmm. and oh, nice. Was upgrading it, I want to say to Rails 5, so it's, it's kind of old. But um, yeah, so we would pair once a week. And uh, I had been just working on my own for a long time. So I wasn't used to just, um, yeah, uh, GitHub pull requests and, and mm. uh, just working collaboratively. And so that was really good practice for that. Um, and then I had other another couple friends here who we had a afternoon uh, sort of code club where we would do uh, coding sprints, where we would just pop on a Zoom and then um, mm -hmm. 25 minutes work on our own thing. And then mm -hmm. after that, check in for five minutes, like, oh, what did you work on? And we they were doing like Coursera courses or, or some other courses, or we would uh, work on our own exorcism projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing exorcism and that was, that was really good for getting um, mentor feedback on like, oh, you could write this code better this way. Um, and then they suggested the advent of code at the end of year, the year. Oh, yeah. and, and I'd never done that before. Um, and that was a good balance with uh, exorcism. Like you want to kind of perfect the code. So it's like, looks really good whereas admin of code is just like every day a new problem and just like how quickly can i just like come up with a solution doesn't matter how terrible mm. <laughs> um, so it's really good yeah um balance of uh coding practices um so I'm trying to think if there was anything else but yeah anything um, in the future well, like this year yeah how far yeah. did you go through advent of code what's that how far did you go with advent of code um, I didn't get all of the days, but oh. I, I can't remember exactly how many I got. Um, probably I, like, yeah, I, now I have to look it up. <laughs> I started it actually having, having, uh, from, from having seen that you were doing it, Kirsten. Um, but I only got into like, <laughs> I only got up to like day four or something. There was uh, still some of the problems that just like the, the way they explained it was just really hard to understand. Like I got put off by that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, it was sometimes, yeah, a bit challenging, but it, yeah, I don't know. I, I was gonna say it maybe helped that I was working on it um, with other friends, but it turns out we didn't actually really help each other. <laughs> <laughs> we worked on it together, no. Like, look, had our own little leaderboard, like, oh, you yeah, got the yeah. day already. <laughs> yeah. um, was there an app in the code I don't know, two, three years ago that was particularly brutal. I, just, I, don't know. I remember attempting it and it, I just ended up being so time consuming that I was like, I'm going to have no December at all if I keep this up. <laughs> they usually start pretty easy for the first five days and uh, coming into Christmas, they're quite hard. Oh, okay. That was, yeah. that was my question. Oh, anyway, was sorry, my... I, I interrupted. What's your uh, upcoming plan, Kirsten? Uh, right. So um, my upcoming plan is uh, I just got hired at a new job. So it's very exciting. <laughs> Are they going to sponsor you? What's that? Are they going to sponsor you? Are they going to sponsor me? Um, yeah. You mean uh, sponsor uh, the oh. Ruby Australia? Or? 
No, no, like uh, right. I thought you were looking for some some employer oh, to. Oh, oh. oh, right, of course. No, yes, that that is not happening because it's a U.S. job. Um, oh, but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That is my awesome. next step: is to have a company that sponsors me, but uh, but not yet. <clears throat> this is As in for, kind of for the visa. For the visa, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think I mean, it'll be good. Back. My coworker Nick is on this call. I don't know if he's listening, but <laughs> um, he's actually working from Japan, which is pretty cool. Oh wow, that's um, cool. Yeah, wow. um, yeah. So no, I can um, work work uh, remotely, obviously, and they're they're uh, working from all over, and awesome. uh, it'll be a really good experience. And then mm. um, yeah, um, eventually my goal is still to to get hired here. What's what's the company? Um, it's called JetBuilt, and it's uh, uh, software for AV uh, companies and professionals who um, need uh, something to manage their proposals and okay. installations, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, they mainly sell to big, um, like, clients who use it, uh, I think, in the construction industry, like okay. setting up AV for new, new constructions and stuff like that, so... Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, it's pretty small. Thanks, Justin. I'm I'm developer number four, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's only my uh, second week. How how old is the company? Sorry. How old is the company? Um, I'm not sure exactly. Um, I only just started. I don't think I've gotten the, the company history yet. <laughs> okay. I think I think like Jared, the CTO. I think he said. At least, yeah, actually, oh, Nick five, did. five or six years, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I think Jared said at least, at least five years. Yeah, awesome. Hi, Nick. This is Nick, everyone. Uh, hi, Nick. <laughs> hey, Nick. Thanks for joining us <laughs> yeah, from yeah. Japan. So, I just uh, listening in while I'm working, so I'm not That's really totally fine. participating. That's yeah. totally fine. What time is it? It is time for me to go cook dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's just after um, six okay we uh I, I know nick from the portland ruby meetup but he lives in japan now so that's awesome uh, good. when um when you were talking about the difference between um the exorcism and um and the advent of code it reminded me a lot of how um a lot of a lot of what I've been doing over the last year is um, um, finding finding tasks that are causing people a lot of pain because they're so tedious, and then automating them out. But because I put them into a um, uh, an internal website, everything's got to be like highly tested, and the UI's got to be nice. And so, no matter how small the task, it could take a while. But then over Christmas, we always get. Um, phenomenally busy because we're in education everything has to be in before school starts again yeah and um and so i just banged out a stack of just like simple scripts i could run rather than making it something that everybody could use on a site yeah. and it was actually kind of refreshing you know like you spend all this time do like you could just spend a month doing a simple task because of all the testing that needs to go in and all the interface and training and Hanging something out in a couple of hours, you're just like, ah, oh, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the future, I'm going to have to like do it properly and refactor yeah. it. But that's that's future Adam problem. Today, Adam gets to have some fun. <laughs> hey, maybe that's uh, how you're going to nurture your career this year, going back. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly don't want to have to uh, be the one who has to like push the run script button every day for the rest of my life. So I would like it to one day be in there, but yeah. Nice. Is uh, do do you have enough scripts now that they need their uh, inventory managed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're asking what what the inventory was, it's just my scripts. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Adam, are uh, those scripts just like the start of semester sort of thing, or is it? Sorry, are the scripts what? Sorry, are they just start of semester sort of things that you need to do? You run them once a semester. Do you, run, do you run them? Oh, no, um, no, they so 
technically they're things that get run almost every day, but it's just that at that point in time, the people didn't have time to do the manual work. So technically speaking, I could just stop writing them now, but um, there's kind of no point. Like it takes, it only takes a couple of seconds to run a few scripts. So mm. why have someone put that work in if I've got a script that will do it for them? Mm. But ultimately I prefer to um, put it in the site and hand it back over. Mm. I was just wondering because uh, I mean, I've been in a similar sort of position before and it was far better to have those same, you know, suite of little scripts that you could run rather than a big um, monolith of code that did everything in a robust way and was all nice and managed. Mm. Um, yeah. Because you didn't know that the next time you came to run those scripts, something would be different. And you'd yes, have to yeah, you'd have to yeah. adapt it and fix it and put it up. So yeah. that's why I was wondering if it was just well, sort of like once every three sort of six months or something like that. So yeah. no, thankfully these will be ongoing tasks. Um, it's uh, you know stuff like um, we often have um, when when schools want to have parent funded. Um, Computer, laptop or iPad programs, mm -hmm. we we develop um, Shopify stores for them, mm. and then the parents perch directly on the Shopify store. But then all that happens is that like we just get a Shopify payout into our bank account, and you've mm. got to reconcile that in the accounting system. So then someone's oh. got to go through all the various Shopify sites to work out where the payout came from and what it was, which or who placed the order and that sort of stuff. So it just sort of like goes through a list of all of our stores, works out where the payouts were, loads all the records into zero, basically sets up the reconciliation process. Unfortunately, we can't complete the reconciliation over the API because the banks don't allow zero to let us have access to the, the bank statements. Oh. <laughs> So I basically get all the way to the end and then someone still has to go into zero and just click the button. <laughs> oh. um, and the other one is that um, Apple doesn't, um, they don't, we don't make money up front. We have to put in a claim to Apple to make money. Right. And so basically we have to go through and find all the recent orders um, split them out according to which distributor they came from, create separate CSV files for them. Um, there's also a special number. Apple has a special number for every customer. So it has to do a lookup in each of these different CSV, CSV files, finding the customer number, applying it to them. Uh, it's a whole annoying process. And then after you submit it, because we don't want, because it takes like a month for the claim to come in, we don't want the claim to be in a different of the time the sale went in. So we then create a manual journal in zero that shuffles the money back into the month that it actually was occurring. So it's all just very manual, boring bullshit that like that you've got good. expensive, good people spending hours just tapping around on boring crap. <laughs> that sounds like thing. Yeah. But ultimately, um, uh, it's inevitable that the customer name in our system won't always name the match the customer name in the CSV. And so mm -hmm. there's always a matching process. And I don't want to have to be the person doing that matching process. <laughs> so I want to hand it over to people in the future. Nice. Still though, it's bloody refreshing to only spend like, you know, a couple of hours on each script and just be like, God, I got so much done today. Like I really yeah. cheap stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like it just basically that. like wiped out like half a week of someone's time in a couple of hours. You're like, this is great. That's, very, that's it. How to nurture your career as a Ruby developer? Replace someone else's job with a Bash script. Yeah. Ah. Be a 10x uh, developer, right? I, I can assure you that there is no replacing jobs. There's, uh, we're basically <laughs> taking people who are overloaded and working overtime. And like, you are no longer working overtime. You will work your hours. In fact, this year um, we are reducing our official work hours um, oh, wow. because there's uh, like we've basically just had like sort of like nine to five because that's what companies mm -hmm. have. But like realistically, schools don't work until five o'clock. Like no. they, when they shut down, they shut down. And so we're like, well, why do we have people around till five? Like we just have them around till four. Um, yeah, and then and then as part of that, we're like, and also you don't work after that time. 
And if you feel the need to work after that time, we need to have discussions about how you can not work after that time. Wow. Mm. Unless it's unless they're like me and they get up late and work till later, that's okay. Mm. It's just if, if they start at nine, they don't work past four. End of story. That's very proactive. I like that. Nice. Mark, do you want to say what you did to nursery career last year? Or not? Not really. Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I, I, I did book club. That was that was yeah. again the same as same deal as Kirsten. I really appreciated that nice. that was beneficial and I enjoyed it and I look forward to when we pick back up again. But um yeah. I I got a lot of that. I shall try to help recruit people. <laughs> oh, I think I think at the moment we're we're just gonna take a bit of a breather and then figure out what the next steps are. But mm. Maybe not wait too long, but at the same time, take a a bit of a step back because it seems like everyone, apart from me, is otherwise engaged. <laughs> I did feel bad about leaving. I'm not going to lie. But I know how much work is ahead of me. Uh, so did you preemptively left? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I know that, yeah, uh, it, just that the timing was, yeah, that Richard also came on and was like, oh, I've got other things I've got going on. I'm going to have to drop out of this one, too. It's like, yeah, so. And Sharon. And Sharon already had done that, yeah, so, yeah. And no, I think, I think it was just me. <laughs> I think me saying I wasn't going to make it last Monday. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> it's just everybody Everybody's was like, <laughs> everyone just bailed. Yeah. I don't know whether there's going to be, whether we had any guests turning up in the thing at the last minute and thinking, where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. True. We did occasionally, yeah, we did tend to get one or two people, but yeah. 